The Pomodoro technique is one of the most well-known study techniques out there, talked by the likes of Ali Abdal, Karma Medic, and Sebastian Puri. However, in this video, I'm gonna share with you why this technique can actually be ineffective in many circumstances, and probably the way that you're using it. And then we'll take a look at the alternative, which is the Flomodoro technique. It's a newly evolved version of the Pomodoro technique that allowed me to top my class and getting a 99.95 ATAR in high school, while still maintaining a perfect GPA at uni. Hey guys, Arthur here, a second year medical student. And on this channel, we focus on learning how to learn so that we can spend our time intentionally on the things and people that matter the most to us. So firstly, we'll look at what is the Pomodoro technique and how do we actually do it? And then we'll start to dig into what does it mean to reach the flow state and how, you know, the techniques that we're trying to use are trying to achieve that. Then we'll look at the drawbacks of the Pomodoro technique and then also look at how to actually do this Flomodoro technique that has saved me so many hours. Also, we'll take a look at how you can actually do this using my flow time log in Notion and also on a stopwatch. The Pomodoro Technique is a time management system that was created by Francesco Cirello in the 1980s. Since then, it's grown massively in popularity, especially with, you know, YouTubers talking about it. And now you can see this and many popular apps like Forest or Flora, which I've both used, and these kind of gamify this technique. The idea is to use a timer to break down your study sessions into smaller bursts. Usually it will be 25 minutes of focused productivity and straight work, followed by five minutes of break. Now this can kind of be adjusted to what you might prefer. So some people like to do 50 50 minutes of work and then 10 minutes break, but it really depends on what type of work you're doing. And each of these cycles is considered one Pomodoro. And at the end of this, the idea is that after a few of these, you just take a bigger break. The point of this technique is to instill this sense of urgency that you feel like you have to get more work done and be focused and not get distracted. And having these distributed breaks is supposed to allow you to re-energize to a certain degree so that you can perform always at your optimum performance. When I first came across to the technique, it was such a big game changer for me just because I wasn't really doing anything like this and procrastination was a real issue for me. So I started using this on a daily basis, but I very, very quickly saw some of the drawbacks that I'm gonna be sharing with you quite soon. And this is kind of why I don't really use the Pomodoro technique at all now. Maybe now I might only use it out of one out of 50 cases. So now let's talk about the flow state, which is what every study technique is really trying to make you achieve in one way or another. The flow state is this state of mind where you're completely immersed in the work that you're doing and you forget about everything and you feel that time just flies by. So you have this feeling of energized focus and full involvement in whatever you're doing. So this allows you to be 100% present in the moment, which is actually a really quite unique feeling. The most natural time that this happens is when I'm doing like an assignment. So for example, two weeks ago, I had four big assignments that I had to do for university and I smashed them all out in one week. So of course, because I was under that big time pressure, uh, when I was doing this, I would completely lose track of time completely. So the reason we do this is so we can work hard, but also to be able to break hard. And that means that you can do whatever you want, you know, without any guilt that you're not studying in that moment. And if you really want to learn more about this, I would highly recommend reading this book called Flow, but I cannot pronounce his name, so I'm not even going to try. So what are the drawbacks of the Pomodoro technique? The main one that I always see happening is that it's not a one size fits all technique, meaning that it doesn't account and adapt for the individual needs of the particular student who's using it. All students have different attention spans, different distractions around them, different content and work that they're doing as well. So for example, some people might feel that they can study for 50 minutes, where other people might be able to feel that they only can study for like five minutes. And if you feel that you're one of those people who can't really keep focus, there's no point you setting a timer for even 25 minutes if you're just going to sit there for 20 minutes just like not really doing productive work when you feel like you need a break and also you know if you have a focus around like 40 minutes and you're doing 25 minute pomodoro timers then you're just going to feel yourself getting interrupted all the time when you're just getting into flow and really you never want to interrupt this state because that's the best place to be in so you might think that the solution is to find the time that works best for you but the problem is as the day goes on there's this thing called an energy map which is how your energy spikes and decreases throughout the day. So for me, my energy spikes in the morning and then it goes down a lot by 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. That's where I feel my most tired and then it spikes up again. So how long I would be studying and focused for these particular times will vary. And that's simply just too hard to track with Pomodoro. And also this technique is just very strict in terms of how the times are imposed on you. You know, almost every single time, I've never finished exactly at the 25 minute or the 50 minute mark. I'm always stuck into something and it just completely interrupts that. And so I spend a, a couple more minutes just focusing on finishing that task, but then that chews up my break. And then, so this would screw up all of the system that I was using and then I'd end up not using it anyway. So let's talk about the better alternative, the Flomodoro technique. 
Look, honestly, the only place where I'd be using Pomodoro, if there are cases where there's really tedious work that I don't want to get done and it's highly urgent, so I just need to do it. Otherwise, in any other place where you want to be prioritizing flow, which is in most cases, I would be using the Flow Medora technique. Unlike the Pomodoro where you do a countdown of 25 minutes, the Flow Medora techniques by counting up. This means you study as normal and you would have a timer near you so you can see that the time is going by, which still gives you that sense of urgency. But the difference is as soon as you see that there is a, a point where you're losing focus, that's when you stop the timer. At that point, you figure out how long you've been studying and you divide this by five and that becomes your break time. And in seeing this used quite a lot, you know, a lot of students using this kind of the divide by five uh, seems to be the sweet spot, but you can edit this if you would like. So this means that you might have focus for 50 minutes, which means you'll have a 10 minute break. 90 minutes would mean an 18 minutes break and 120 minutes would mean a 24 minute break. And the beauty of this is because all of your study sessions are gonna look different. It means that also your Flow Medoro sessions will be attuned to who you are and how you study. You can go longer, shorter, and all in between, depending on your energy map. Another thing that you would be noticing if you're doing this around exam time or preparing for a test, you'll notice that your first Flow Medoro session is usually gonna be your longest. And then you can track how that, that time is getting lower and lower. So this really, really does optimize your maximum efficiency for a longer period of time without any of the drawbacks that I mentioned from the Pomodoro technique. So let's also look at how we can actually do this. Okay, so as you can see here, this is my flow time log. This is kind of the table that I use in Notion that allowed me to extract as much value from this technique in my exam period in year 12. Now, I also use this a little bit in my first year of uh, uni, but I don't really use it too much now, just because once you master this technique, you can move to a, a different form of this, which I'll show you with just a Google stopwatch. So the link to this template is in the description, but I'll kind of give you an idea of what it is. So you wanna have intention setting when you start your study session. So I would write down what am I hoping to work on. A lot of this was actually interview preparation for my UCAT as well. And then you can see the start time. And then I would also uh, put down the time when I stop. Then I have these little calculations which would figure out how long I was working for. Um, it would also give me the, the break time, which is dividing that by five. And every single time that I get interrupted or distracted, I would write this down into my uh, notion table here and also uh, keep track of what those distractions were. And this will allow you to create a distraction cheat sheet so you can see what are the things that can constantly getting in your way. Once you get rid of all the distractions that keep getting in the way and you get really comfortable with this technique, the thing that I started to use instead was just straight up a Google stopwatch. This meant that I could keep track of how long I'm working live, uh, but also it just meant that in general, it was just a lot easier to, to get the setup. However, this does not mean that I got rid of intention setting or anything like that. I was still doing that all of the time. And then just using Alfred, I would figure out how long I was working for, divide that by five, and now I have a three second break. If you've watched until now and you want to really upgrade to study techniques, make sure to check out my video on how to effectively pre-study. One hour of effective pre-study can save 10 hours of studying later on, so you better get onto that. Make sure to take full advantage of the Flow Medora technique, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.